Good morning, West Coast. Good afternoon, East Coast. This is Gary Stockco with the Restaurant Technology Guys. Our webinar today, iPad Simplicity, how iPad POS can drive revenue. In fact, we've got a graphic, thank you, Ryan, showing Let It Rain. I'm Gary Stotko, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for CBS. I've got my partner, Jeremy Julian. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Gary. And Ryan Williams. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Super excited about this presentation today. It's all over the news. Restaurant Nations News, uh, Bloomberg, you name it, Jeremy. You've got Chili's, you've got BJ's, you've got Applebee's, and others. But take us through what we're seeing in the industry the last 18 to 24 months. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, just with the headlines that are there, and, and we just took a small sampling, everybody's talking about in, um, empowering their guests and how do we get technology into their hands to drive some revenue and, and do some different things. So later today, we'll be talking just about what it, what it means and how uh, how that all looks. And so, um, so, you know, again, all of these different brands have done different things about uh, about empowering their guests through technology in the in the uh, the space, you know, at the table or, or in their hands with their smartphones and different things. So all of them have taken a different approach, mind you, but we're going to kind of talk about what we've found to be uh, the reasons why these brands have chosen to go that route. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, Jer, you know what? We talked about iPad simplicity, but the difference of uh, manufacturers that are playing in the tablet arena, arena across the board, both on operating systems and um, quality capability, software it drives, and then and, and. Yeah, hardware platforms, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to do for their guests, what they're trying to do inside of their brand. Um, again, each one of these people, it, it's a different restaurant. Um, they're all different restaurants, and they all are trying to do different things, and so all trying to solve different business problems. All of it, in the end, trying to drive additional revenue and trying to drive shareholder value. Yeah, and guest engagement. So, so sure. that topic will come up time and time again. Here's the restaurant technology, guys, five ways to drive revenue with iPads at the table. Faster table turns. Yeah, um, I mean, it, I know that uh, I, I've got three small children. If you guys have listened for any length of time, know that I've got children. It drives me crazy when I want to pay for my bill and can't get out of the restaurant because I can't get a hold of a server. And so that's a big one is being able to turn tables. I'm going to on a date with my wife, and I need to get to the movie. How do I get out? You put technology at the table, allow the guests to run their own speed. It's huge. It's huge. You're going to, you know, um, and we'll talk some statistics here in just a couple minutes, but it's huge the ability to get those tables turned over. I know when Stack first came out, I was able to get in and out from the time I sat down until the time I, I paid my bill in less than 30 minutes at a casual dining establishment. It's huge. And I was walking out the door at 27, 28 minutes, and, and it was great because I had an appointment up the street that I needed to get to. And I chose that brand specifically because I knew I could control my experience and how fast I could get in and out. Yeah, yeah, it is about it is about control. Upselling desserts and, and drinks, this is huge, and the statistics can't lie. Um, they haven't lied. Yeah, no, and, and the ability to have technology in front of a guest, everyone has been, um, well, I shouldn't say everyone, but... Uh, Kiosk ordering, the whole holy grail of kiosk ordering and or getting technology in front of people is you can message to them what you want, where you want them to go, whether that's an additional round of beers or that's a, a dessert at the end of their meal, it's some special offer, it's the ability to have complimentary items, the, the Cabernet to go with the steak that, that they wouldn't have known otherwise and you can't train your servers but you have somebody kind of high level that can do those things. So upselling of those items not only from the perspective of getting a second round in there or a third round in there that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise because the server's too busy um, dealing with other tables, and then secondarily, the fact that I can prompt um, the guests, uh, give you just a quick story of a coworker of mine that told me a story the other day about he was getting slow service towards the latter part of his meal at a um, casual dining, or actually a little bit of a, of a higher end casual dining establishment, and he and his wife and friends needed to get somewhere they wanted the dessert, they had looked at the dessert menu, but they could not get a hold of the server fast enough. And it was a party at six or a party at eight, and they couldn't get a hold of the server fast enough. And so they ultimately that restaurant lost out on that sale that uh, that they would have made because they wanted the dessert but couldn't get a hold of the server fast enough in order to get the dessert to the table. And so they just said, you know what, we'll just pay and get out of here and eat dessert somewhere else. So yeah. huge loss of revenue opportunity. But then there's the second side of it, just putting those items in front of the guests and prompting them. 
it, it, it drives revenue. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll show some more statistics in a bit. And then the marketing opportunities, Jeremy, just from the from the guest facing application and at the table. Yeah, no, and, and um, some of the things that we've seen people do, uh, large, large brands, whether it be Anheuser Busch or, or Coca Cola or the credit card companies on some of these kiosk platforms and these, these different platforms, they will pay to get their branding message in front of customers and, and they'll pay to get their items pushed to the top. Typically what we found is the items that are in the top left end up getting sold more often than the top items on the bottom right. Yeah. It's been a it's been a mainstay in casual dining restaurant in uh, menu engineering forever. Yeah. And so now we're taking that, that menu engineering and put it onto a digital tablet. Coke is going to pay to put their item at the top above a 7-Up or something that's a different brand. Um, Discover and, and Chase, I know, have also been in the space where just before you go to pay, it prompts and says, if you pay with your Chase card, you know, we'll give you a discount or, or we'll give you an extra 5,000 miles towards your, your frequent flyer miles. Well, that money goes to the restaurant tour by branding Chase or Discover or American Express or whomever it is. So, so think about those things. Those are definitely revenue opportunities when you put the technology into the customer's hands. Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much longer on this bullet point, but this is also um, something that it has yet to be um, totally um, understood, the, the possibilities. Um, but as far as data mining is concerned, as far as saving past orders is concerned, as far as capturing email addresses is concerned, uh, there's just so much that goes along with um, not only the, the revenue opportunities Jeremy's describing, but also others by, by digging into the data. Yeah, so. very much so. And then revenue from games and music. Yeah, um, this is something that, uh, I mean, I'll be completely frank, that when we developed our initial product that you guys will see here in a few minutes, we didn't think that this was as much of a hot button as it was. It took some others in the space that, uh, that started doing it to realize that, you know what, it could pay for, as we've looked at the numbers, it could completely pay for your, your technology purchase. And so it ends up being a cost-neutral um, cost neutral type of uh, you know, business relationship where you can put tablets out at the table and you can put iPads out at the table and have it paid for through games and music that are getting purchased if you're an establishment like, like Buffalo Wild Wings that has a, you know, a music system, a jukebox system, digital jukebox at the table. If you are um, a kid-friendly environment and you want kids to be able to play games on the tablets, what we found in, in that game space is that a lot of the games are interactive um, trivia type games that, that are getting people engaged around the restaurant. Social type games that don't have you just staring at the tablet, but you're trying to compete with your friends across the restaurant. Yeah, that's so, cool. So, but it, it's it's huge, and, and you don't have to give it away for free. Some places like to give it away for free because they um, want you to stay longer and, and they want to make the money off the beer, but others have found that they can charge for those things at you know, a nominal fee, a dollar or two dollars to, to play the games or play the music, and it's a revenue opportunity for your for your brand. Yeah, no, very much so. And then guests control their experience. This is it really goes back to your your comments with faster table turns. It goes back to your comment on upselling drinks and dessert and appetizers. Man, it, it uh, the boomers, are, uh, excuse me, the the millennials are, are driving this, but everybody else is getting right behind them. Yeah, I, I mean, I know for you know, and I'm kind of on that. Um, on that border of millennials, I'm a little bit older than that, but but I have a lot of friends that are that are a little bit younger than me, and they they don't want to have to deal with talking to somebody. They wanna they want to control what they're getting, when they're getting it, how they're getting it. You know, you you hear it in the news, you see it all over the newspaper. If you if you even read a newspaper or you know the headlines of people want control of their experience. I know for myself when I have the ability to order it the way I want it, I do it. Oftentimes, oh, I, I don't like tomatoes, you know, and I might not even say don't put tomatoes, I'll just pull it off. But the better guest experience and the best getter, better guest empowerment allows me to take that off. I might not tell the server because I just feel like it's a nuisance and it may or may not come out properly, whereas when I can control it through a, an iPad, I easily can take off the tomatoes off of my hamburger and it just, you know, it comes out the way I want it. Yeah. So, and then, it, again, it still goes back also to that as you're uh, allowing them to control their... Um, control their experience, they're going to get up and go faster if they need to. Right. Ryan, you wanted to add something? Yeah, you know, and but that's, that's also not to say that um, people, it's not necessarily abandoning the traditional server at the table. 
this truly allows the guests to craft their experience at the restaurant to whatever they want it to be. If they want a little bit more of the personal aspect that a server brings, they can absolutely have that. This just gives the additional opportunity to create the experience that each individual customer wants. Yeah, and I think that there is an expectation in the early days with um, staff going live and, and others is that there would be a labor decrease because I won't need as many servers when, in fact, the opposite is true. I need those people delivering food because consumers are ordering more rapidly. And it's, I mean, we are in the hospitality industry, after all, and the hospitality industry, they can deliver more hospitality because they're not having to deal with the 10%, 10 to 15 percent of their time that they have to deal with the point of sale in a traditional sense. Yeah, they get to focus on the, on making me, the guest, feel welcome in their establishment and enhancing my experience. Yep, very much so. So let's dig into the numbers because I think this is, um, boy, these are conservative, Jer. We we looked at these, 15 percent increase in tips. We know for a fact that we've seen num uh, those numbers higher. With some of our own customers. Yeah, it's it's amazing that um, you know even back to Gary's point of uh, you don't have to lose the hospitality or Ryan's point about you don't have to lose the hospitality and you don't have to cut your servers, but it's amazing because you're suggesting the tip percentage to them and they're not having to do math on a on a guest check and you know people are poor with that stuff. It just kind of says, what do you want to tip? Um, I know I'm, I'm an Uber client, which is another you know um, technology that that empowers a guest to do their stuff. The tip suggests for me, and I don't have to really think about it. I just go. Same kind of thing has been happening, and you can set those percentages within within the solution, within our solution, and in many others, where the tip percentage is set and fixed. And um, again, it, it helps. Yeah. It, it helps the servers. Servers like it. They have, they have spend less time working on technology and more time dealing with the guests, and they get paid more. Right. So yeah, win-win all the way around. And then we, we focus on this next one, appetizer and dessert, but I'll throw in there alcohol sales. I know of a specific example with one of our customers that saw a 33% increase in their in their bar when they put iPads at the table. Why? Back to Jeremy's statements earlier, I, I the guest, get to get my drink when I want my drink. I'm not waiting for someone to walk by to see if I'm down below that bottom third of my cup, and boom, I've ordered, I'm, I'm ordering my next drink because I'm ready. Yep. Yeah, no, and, and again, prompting them prompting them to say, you know, before it goes to pay, hey, are you sure you don't want to drink, you know, don't want um, the dessert, and, and, you know, and the funny thing is, is pictures sell as well. So you think about the pictures, um, oftentimes on the dessert menu, you're not able to display the pictures. I know some of the finer dining restaurants have the plastic desserts or even the real desserts that they bring out to you to give you that um, that. Uh, mouth appeal or that appeal to say, oh, no, I really want the chocolate cake. I know I shouldn't, but I want the chocolate cake. The pictures sell it. And so um, that craveability factor from the from showing it on an iPad is huge. No, absolutely. The graphic appeal that we get from iPads and, and other tablets is astonishing. And, and we as, as consumers are still stuck on the graphic appeal, which, I'll, you know what, if you deliver what the picture looks like, boy, oh, boy, that's a win for us. And then the last one about total dining time. Um, boy, this number can fluctuate up and down um, from five minutes, quite frankly, because uh, depending on the circumstances, payment payment is probably the greatest frustration for the dining experience. Would you agree? Very much so. And, and you know what, truthfully, that what restaurants are selling is they're selling the experience, but the inventory that they have is the, the seats. And so the more you can turn over those seats with new bodies, the better off you are. So if you think about it, depending upon the size of your restaurant, that five minutes could turn into thousands of dollars a day depending upon the size of your restaurant. So just by, by t turning that table and getting another quarter of a turn out of every table or another you know, eighth of a turn or tenth of a turn even, it's just going to drive that much more revenue. So the, the items that we had specified on, on driving revenue into the business was just focused on a guest-facing capability. But all of us in this call know that, that the consumer is changing and so are their demands. And so typical restaurant system setups, Jer, go through this list for us. So um, part of why we, we put this graphic on here is just to talk about if you want to get the ordering modes that we are going to be able to offer. And we're not looking for this to be a total commercial for what we can do for you. But the truth is, is in just this, this slide here, if you've got a traditional point of sale solution, 
and you want to do guest facing iPads or another tablet at the, at the table, and you want to do web ordering, and you want to potentially do kiosks, and you want to do mobile ordering, you could have up to five or six vendors to have to deal with that, along with the management, you know, um, uh, you, you've got five different databases potentially to manage. And so that complexity, that inner workings between all of those systems, the, the sales reporting, all of that stuff just creates a lot of complexity and a lot of work for your management staff at the restaurant, your management staff at the corporate office. And so it's just, it's huge. And so we're going to kind of talk a little bit about our solution here in a few minutes and, and why we designed it the way that we did from the ground up to be able to, to facilitate all of these different ordering modes and not have to have five different vendors to deal with it. Yeah, the, the first part of our webinar really is pointing out the possibilities and and what what is out there for restaurateurs to leverage to drive more revenue. And now we're going to segue into our own product, but also mostly the mindset behind developing the product and how we've executed with that product because it all is really all about the different modalities that one system can manage on a restaurant's behalf. Jeremy touched on the pain at corporate for all our IT friends that are in on this webinar. Um, know the challenges faced with keeping my online ordering working with my point of sale, working with my ERP, working with my, you know, on down the list. Yeah, and then marketing comes to you and says, oh, we got a coupon drop that needs to go in tomorrow, and now I've got to put it into five different systems all at the same time. It just creates a nightmare for you guys. So we're hoping that you guys see the value in what we've created uh, to at least start the conversation. And even if it's not to work with us, but to force your vendors to either work closer together and or to get them integrated uh, so that you're not having to manage four and five and six different places. Absolutely. Like Jeremy said, if you go a different direction, these capabilities are out there for you. The possibility of driving these types of revenues through your business is possible for you, and you should be exploring it. Um, with vim and vigor at this point because it's happening before our eyes. We'll go into our own product with North Star Order Entry. Uh, our focus has been uh, initially on the guest facing today's webinar around all those abilities of enhancing that guest experience, that guest empowerment, but this capability comes in different modalities that are win-win for the restaurateur also. You've got your, your, your standard POS, You've got the capabilities of having kiosk, web ordering, mobile ordering, and then finally the guest experience. So the challenges that restaurants face in managing, as Jeremy pointed out, all of those different vendors are eliminated with this product solution. Yep. No, it, it cuts a lot of the complexity out. And again, we partnered with Apple and the iPad to um, deliver a phenomenal guest experience because, you know, just their hardware is great. They've, they've done a great job of, of also educating the guests on, on what to expect as far as things like swiping back gesturing. and forth and gesturing yeah. and, and all of those kind of things. So we'll yeah. talk a little bit more about that when we go to the demo of the product. Yeah, it's it's been a really exciting opportunity for us to um, create a product or a software that leverages those capabilities with iPads themselves, three or four hundred million existing users around the world. They're pretty much pre-trained on, on what to expect when they pick up that device, and so we've mimicked that. And then we've taken it a step further real quickly in, in working with Microsoft also in, in porting this platform over. So. We're going to jump into uh, a quick demo of the software, a quick presentation on North Store Order Entry guest facing application. And so bear with me as I transition over if there's any technological.
Can you guys hear us now? Sound-wise? Okay. I just got a bunch of yeses. So, and then can you guys see the 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 picture of a cheesesteak and Italian cheesesteak on the screen as well? If you guys could just let us know. I'm sorry. We knew that we might have some technical difficulties. We practiced a bunch, but uh, <laughs> go to gets us every go, time. Go to gets us from time to time. Um, so, are you guys seeing the the this picture of the screen up there? A quick yes will help us out. Awesome. All right. Thank I see, you guys. I, I see a bunch of people saying yes, so I'm going to get going. Um, let me just log out real quick. Again, I'm not going to go through super in depth. We'll do. Um, uh, we'll, we'll go through and do a, a longer demo at a different time of the product. I'm just going to kind of go through the different items that we talked about related to prompting and, and the different things. So this is our iPad-based system. It's called North Star Order Entry. It does have the ability to do guest-facing, staff-facing, being staff-facing, uh, as traditional point of sale guest-facing, which is really the primary focus. It has a web component to where you could do mobile ordering from uh, uh, from a handheld or tablet as well as from a full browser. One thing that I just got in as a word is it, um, from one of one of you guys is it might be easier for you to see the screen if you were to drag the two little um, vertical lines over to grow the size of the screen. It'll make it a little bit easier to see. Or just grab the bottom right hand corner of the video screen and pull it pull it down. So um, so with that, uh, with that, I'm just going to kind of go through a little bit of an ordering um, type of uh, type of environment. First, before before I go there, you've got kind of your items in your categories over here on the left hand side, and so I can jump through my soups, I can jump through my beverages. This is all customizable. You can do it however you want based on what your preferences are. Put the top selling items that are your highest margin items on the top left. Put the categories how you want them to. Like we talked about, we're using the ability to gesture, and so if you can't see on the video, I'm able to scroll, and the menus are able to scroll up and down. I'm able to uh, select an item. It's going to prompt me and, and pick up uh, a full-size picture. If I want, this picture could you know look however you, your artist rendition wanted it to be. I can also have potentially complementary items here if I wanted to, related to, like I talked about earlier, with wines and, and uh, wines talking to steaks. When I click on the customize button, it brings me up with the item and it gives me all of my toppings here on the left, all of my potential toppings. And then on the right hand side, it shows me what is by default on that item. The little blue arrows are kind of items that need to be selected. So in a point of sale world, those are your kind of force modifiers. We need to select the sandwich side and side size and we need to select the um, uh, addressing. So those are forced. And then you've got kind of the other items. If I wanted to drag off an item, I could drag off the lettuce, and it now no longer has lettuce. If you wanted to, you could have that picture changed to have the lettuce be removed. It's a capability of our system. And if I wanted to drag dill pickles onto that sandwich, I could. If I'm not comfortable with the idea of dragging, I can just click the X button, and it will remove that. And I can hit the plus button to add it. It shows you the item all the way on the right there. But since I haven't selected the size of the sandwich or the, the force modifier of um, dressings, when I go as a guest to try and send it to the kitchen, it displays the, um, uh, it displays the, the items that are forced. So it's got step one of two here. And again, you might not be able to see because the screen is kind of small. Select my dressing, so I want to do marinara. And then it says, do I want a regular or a large sandwich? I do a large sandwich. And then it's going to bring me to a screen that shows me, is this what you want to order? You can, if you want, also add a name. So I can add Jeremy here so that I know when the food gets run to the table, it's going to print on the chip that um, uh, it's going to print on the chip, hey, this, this cheesesteak is for Jeremy. Now that item is going to show up on the on-screen guest check on, on the right-hand side. It's going to show that item. It's going to show the price. If I wanted to, if it hadn't been sent to the kitchen, I can go modify it. Oops, sorry. Um, I hit the wrong button. Uh, that was getting into the staff, and I'll, I'll log into that in just a second. I can place that order, send it through to the kitchen. It's going to prompt me, say, is everybody ordered? Yes. These are all prompts that you can do. 
Something else, um, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to try and catch up to some of those questions here in just a second. Uh, what, somebody asked how many pictures can you add per item. On the on screen, I have one item, one picture here, one picture here, and then one picture on the um, on the on screen piece there. If I wanted to potentially scroll through, I could do some different different things with that, um, with related to related to the the multiple multiple pictures. But it's really kind of the small, medium, and large size pictures on there. Uh, one other thing that that uh, did get brought up is why do I have this little compass looking thing? The compass for lettuce that actually sh could show a picture right now. It's a picture of a compass because I don't have a small picture of a lettuce, but if I wanted to that could display a picture of, a, of lettuce and, and whatnot. So all things that are capable there. I'm going to let the screen sit for a second and just kind of talk about some different things, but you'll see here in a second, you'll see a prompt for, you know, what we call our idle timer. And the idle timer could be your dessert thing. It could be your bottle of wine. It could be your, um, you know, any different number of things. It could be sign up for my loyalty program. It yeah. could be... It's a promo opportunity to engage the guests. Yep, very much so. And so that can pop on the screen. One of the, Two of the other things that I do want to go through before um, before we finish is also the music and the um, music and the, and the jukebox. And so we'll talk about the, the jukebox, which is kind of the music thing. And, oh, sorry, actually, the idle timer doesn't work while I'm in an item. I apologize. I'm, like, sitting here waiting, going, why isn't it showing up? I'll show that to you guys in just a second. But you have the ability to, and these two logos here down on the bottom, um, and again, it's kind of dark, but you see this is kind of the game. It looks like a, a controller. You have the ability to have a game. It's going to prompt you to purchase. We've got $0 for the purchase item, but I can purchase this game, have it add to my guest check. This happens to be a what's the top selling beers in America, and you can drag your beers to the different screens. These games are all customizable. You can use different games that, that are either on... Um, just in different places, or you can customize a game that fits your brand and matches your brand with us. All very capable and, uh, of you know things that we can do on the iPad. Another marketing opportunity that I want to throw in there real quick is the ability to ask the question, what are the best selling items at this restaurant? Yep. Yeah, what's our top selling appetizer? What's our top selling beer? How long have we been in business? So trivia type games, you know, you see on the backs of menus, people want to know your brand you could put those things in kind of the games area. Get so your promo. So there's my promo. You see the idle idle, you know, sitting idle promo, that's that's a promo that could pop up and do um, any number of things and kinda I kinda talked about the different examples, but I could go in and order that, I could customize it or just say no thank you or hit the X. If I go in to customize it, that CN burger comes up and does the exact same thing that uh, we talked about with the cheesesteak and you see the Heinz ketchup has the logo for Heinz on there. The and so all the different things are capable. Add this to my order. Say okay. Go ahead and place my order. Yes, I want to place it. It goes through the kitchen. Now the food comes. If I want to pay, I can go here to pay. Now I've got all of the different items. As you can see here, I've got Jeremy as the name on that cheesesteak, the original cheesesteak that I had. If it's longer, shorter, I can scroll up or down. I go to pay the check. It says please swipe my credit card or I'm paying with cash. I don't have um, I don't have a card reader hooked up, so I'm just going to go ahead and pay with cash. Um, and it's going to prompt me for my tip, suggest the tip amounts on cash. If I wanted to pay short, uh, I could do that. Go next, and then it's going to say, how do I want my receipt? Do I want it emailed to me? Do I want it printed? Or I don't want a receipt. If I go to email, it prompts for my email address. I can type that in. And hit send. Oh, sorry, I forgot. That has to be. And if I wanted to do a memo, this is a business launch with Gary, so that I know when my expense report comes in, hey, I'm sending that in. I hit send, and yes, that's correct. It goes off. It sends me an email, and it says a staff member will be notified to be able to do um, come take the cash from me because if if it was credit card, it wouldn't even matter. If it's not, then, um, and it's cash, they need to alert a staff member. I do want to go through real quick the jukebox, because I promised you guys that a few minutes ago. Jukebox and the idea of, of doing a digital jukebox at the table. You've got kind of the now playing window here over on the left. You've got the ability to browse, and you can kind of go through and scroll by, by group, and you can, you know, click down there. This is all kind of uh, under agreement with uh, 
with your jukebox provider that, that you can play these things. I can search by artist, I can search by album, or I can search by song. I can also, or I shouldn't say search, that's browsing. I also, if I wanted to search, I could search and type in the name of the song and it would show up. So all very capable things. You can charge for this similar to the way that you um, uh, charge for this the way that you are charging for games, or you don't have to. All, again, possible, not necessary, but possible, depending upon how your restaurant operates and if you want to do the jukebox thing and you want to do the game thing. So, again, um, ability to pay, back to ordering, kind of scroll through and, and continue to go through go through the ordering process. Is there anything else, Gary, that, that we wanted to kind of talk about? I know there's... We've got so much. The hard part is, is I want to be respectful of your guys' exactly. time. And, yeah, so. let's let's open it up this way, Jeremy. Folks, if there's more that you want to see and you just want to peek inside, please don't hesitate to reach out to, to Jeremy or Ryan or myself and set some time aside. Let's go through the software because the possibilities are pretty amazing when you bring into play the ability to have web ordering, guest, and kiosk, and POS all in one system managed from one database is really unique and so we'd love to have the chance to take you on a, on a greater tour. Um, so reach out to us and we'll make those arrangements. I can't think that there's anything else, Jer, that we'd want to add to that. Yeah, and again, we can do all of the different things related to promoing things, prompting for desserts. There's so much to it, it's, it's hard to go through it and again, we're looking to be respectful of your guys' time. We try and keep these things to less than 40 minutes every time so that you're not having to sit for an hour and listen to us talk. So Totally. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the webinar and then or the, the webcam and we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to Gary's Q and A and, and uh, the slide deck. Did you did you get all the questions as we were going through or is there some more that are in there? Let me go ahead and look. Uh, we've had quite a few questions and if there's questions that you guys have um, while we're going through besides the uh, um, let me go through because there was a whole bunch of people that said no sound, no sound, no sound a little bit ago. Um, Brian, do you see any on there? How many pictures can you add? I think I answered that one. Um, the who's our one of the questions that came in is who's our provider for the um, the jukebox solution? We partnered with a company called iJukebox, who has the digital rights to be able to play through this media and and that affiliation and that that you would have to work with them. They integrate to existing digital jukeboxes for within the restaurant. So yeah, they have the they offer you the ability to purchase the song. Um, you pay cost, and then and then you do have the ability to transfer some of that cost and or plus a margin to the consumer. So we've seen folks do ninety nine cents a song, fifty cents a song. Either way you go, between fifty cents and ninety nine cents, it's at a profit based on the cost of the music individually. So another re revenue stream to keep in the back of your mind. Um, one of the other questions is what's the cost for games? Um, really that comes back to what you want to do as a restaurateur. If you want to give it away for free, you can. If you want to allow them to buy into, I know on some of the other um, brands that have done the games, they do, you get a certain time limit for the games for one fixed price and you get access to all the games that are in their library. Uh, that's the business model and approach we're going with today. Yeah, we but, are going to have a couple can games, in, a handful of can games in there that come with the system. That, uh, to Jeremy's point, if you want to add a price to it, you're free to do it, or you can offer it. We're going to offer it free to you. There will be, a, like I said, a handful of games in the system with it. Um, if you want to charge the consumer, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Got you. Um, there's a question about um, MDM or mobile device security. We are not yet partnered with anybody or doing any mobile device security, although it's something we'll be doing later uh, later in 2015 that we'll have that as part of an offering. So that's out there. Um, this is software only available on iPads or will it work on Windows tablets. Today, the guest-facing application only is available for iPads. Um, will we engage with a client that wants to be on a Windows tablet? Yes, but today we only have iPads. And then last question is just kind of what different ordering modes do you deal with? What other different types of restaurants do you deal with? Um, I mean, primarily... That's a good question. Yeah, yeah it, it really is across the board um, uh, from, uh, from a uh, entertainment-type 
restaurants, um, cruise lines across uh, stadiums, arenas, casual dining, casual fast dining, food, fast food, drive through. I mean, it really is depends on the module. So let me run through it really quick. It's quick, if it was point of sale, we see it working really well in table service and fast casual. The simplicity, the intuitiveness, all that stuff lends itself to those those two categories and we're doing that successfully. We see table service being tested at a number of different places, whether it just be in the dining room, just in the in the uh, in the bar area or some combination of both. We also are working with folks in quick service. So it, it really at this point is not limited um, by segment. Yep. So, for sure. Was that the last uh, I mean that's I'm gonna say there's I mean there's quite a bit of um, different questions, but I think uh, why don't we get get to those just because we're already at 40 minutes into our webinar and I, I uh, um, there, there's a couple of little ones but they're very we'll, specific that I think we can answer. We can reach out those. individually. Yeah. Super. Then you know what? Thank you guys for joining us today. We apologize. We do try to stick to a pretty tight time frame. We ran over today, um, but appreciate and value your guys' feedback. You're welcome to connect with myself, Jeremy, or Ryan via email or call us uh, on our cell phones. And then we'll have a, another webinar coming up uh, later here in October. We'll reach out to you and announce it as it gets closer. We bid you guys adieu and wish you a great day. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone.